Chef v. Mathis, 199A2D 548 Del, 1964, was a case in which the Delaware Supreme Court first addressed the issue of director conflict of interest in a corporate change of control setting. This case is the predecessor to future seminal corporate law cases including, Unocal Corp. v. Mesa Petroleum Co., Revlon v. McAndrews, and Paramount v. Time. Topic. Facts Holland Furnace Company manufactured home furnaces. The company's marketing strategy involved door-to-door -door sales, which employed a large workforce. This model, if not unique to Holland Furnace, was nevertheless unusual. From the standpoint of Arnold Mermont, a businessman who had been purchasing Holland Furnace stock, it was unprofitable. These practices also implicated Holland Furnace in charges of unfair trade practices. An investigation of these practices by the Federal Trade Commission had already been pending for a year at the time of the events underlying the decision in CHEF. Sales representatives for Holland would go door to door posing as official inspectors. Claiming to be employed by the homeowner's utility or by the local government, these salesmen would disassemble the furnace, refusing to reassemble it for lack of spare parts. Holland's core business lay in replacement boilers. Chef Landwehr Family Group had effective control over the company, with 18.5% of Holland stock. Chef, a family member, was Holland's chief executive officer. From 1948 to 1956, Holland's sales declined by 25%. Management attributed the sharp drop to a boom in sales following World War II, which could not be sustained in later years. Mermont, an owner of an automotive parts manufacturing business, approached Chef in 1957 to discuss the possibility of a merger between the two companies. Chef was not interested in a business combination. Rebuffed, Mermont purchased 6% of Holland stock on the open market. Chef ordered an investigation of Mermont, and learned that Mermont had engaged in corporate takeovers and liquidation of several companies. At the resulting trial, Chef would testify that Mermont was not well regarded among local area businessmen. Chef and Mermont met a second time, by which time Mermont owned 11% of Holland stock. Mermont told Chef that Holland's door-to-door -door sales tactic was obsolete and should be abandoned in favor of a wholesaler marketing strategy. Upon learning of Mermont's plans, Chef's and Holland's board of directors agreed that Mermont posed a threat to Holland's continued existence. Holland's board would claim that Mermont's threat caused many of Holland's employees to quit in anticipation of the threatened takeover. With the stated aim of eliminating Mermont's threat to Holland's existence, the Holland Board of Directors authorized the repurchase of Mermont's holdings of Holland stock at a price above the prevailing market stock price. Essentially, the board authorized the payment of Greenmail to Mermont. Business judgment ruled Delaware Supreme Court first had to determine whether Holland's directors were protected from judicial scrutiny of their actions under the business judgment rule. While the business judgment rule typically protects corporate officers from judicial scrutiny of their actions, the rule could be limited if judges found a conflict of interest. In the case of Holland Furnace, the board's purchase of shares with corporate funds prevented a hostile takeover which could have been in the best interest of the company while also maintaining their control of the company. Thus, the court had to decide whether the board was so conflicted that they should not be afforded business judgment rule protection. Threat to corporate policy The question then presented is whether or not the board satisfied the burden of proof of showing reasonable grounds to believe a danger to corporate policy and effectiveness existed by the presence of the Mermont stock ownership. It is important to remember that the directors satisfy their burden by showing good faith and reasonable investigation. The directors will not be penalized for an honest mistake of judgment, if the judgment appeared reasonable at the time the decision was made. Topic. Judgment The court held that the directors were protected by the business judgment rule, because they held a good faith belief that Mermont posed a threat to Holland's continued existence. 
Testimony established the board's understanding of Mermont's reputation for acquiring businesses and liquidating them, and that Mermont's apparent intentions negatively affected Holland's workforce. Therefore, after Delaware's holding in this case, a director could rebut any inference of a conflict of interest, and remain protected by the business judgment rule, if they showed that they held a good faith belief that they were pursuing a business purpose that would benefit the corporation. <laughs> Aftermath The court's findings mention, and minimize, the FTC investigation of Holland Furness. The court, endorsing Holland's board, also notes that Holland's downward sales trend reversed itself in 1957, the year that Mermont was bought out. What the court does not mention is that Holland's fortunes suffered another reversal, this one fatal. Holland's sales were in excess of $31 million in 1958, but dropped to $1.1 million by 1965. That year, Holland's stock reached a high of $1.63 per share, compared to a closing price of $11.18 minus per share in October 1957. Holland Furness, listed in editions of Moody's Industrial Manual for the years covering the events of this case, did not appear in 1966. Holland Furness faced charges of unfair trade practices that were known prior to the decision in Chef v. Mathis. As a result of their investigations into the sales practices of Holland Furness, the FTC issued a cease and desist order against the company, an order upheld by the United States Court of Appeals, Seventh Circuit. Ultimately, Holland Furness and Mr. Chef were held in contempt for violating the order by continuing to engage in unfair trade practices. Mr. Chef went to jail for six months. The unsavory character of Arnold Mermont is a key factor in the court's decision. During proceedings leading up to the court's decision in Chef, Mr. Chef testified as to Mermont's reputation that Throughout the whole of the Kalamazoo Battle Creek area, and Detroit too, where I spent considerable time, he is well known and not highly regarded by any stretch. Arnold Mermont, who died in 1978, involved himself in pursuits other than business. According to his obituary in the New York Times, Mermont was both a patron of the arts and a visionary for social justice. A governing life member of the Art Institute of Chicago and a former trustee of the Lyric Opera and Ballet Theater, Mermont was the first Illinois industrialist to back a law ending employment discrimination against African Americans. As chairman of the Illinois Public Aid Commission in the early 1960s, he campaigned for publicly supported birth control for welfare families. See also Weinberger v. UOP, Inc. 457A2D701, Dell, 1983 Unockel v. Mesa